Well, friends, we have come to the topic of prayer in systematic theology here. And of course, it's a delightful but challenging topic. First of all, we live in this world where so many things are falling apart. We feel the mortality uh, of not only our own bodies, but also those around us and the world around us that seems to be fading away. And we're longing for something that will last forever. So we, we, we have so much on our hearts that we need to pray. Even as I was preparing to do this video for you, a message came across the screen. And the need to pray for someone in our church that's facing health challenges. Yeah, earnest desire for God's healing hand to be with this good friend and as he faces these challenges. Yeah, that's, that's something where our hearts go out to the Lord in prayer, knowing that he is able to do abundantly far more than anything we ask or imagine. But what is prayer, actually? The, um, the 17th century authors of, of uh, the Westminster Larger Catechism, they answered that question this way. They said, prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God. I, I, I think that's important right off the bat, that we're not trying to pretend to be asking for something else other than what we really want. Now we, see we want our desires to be more and more conformed to the word of God in the scriptures, but we really need to offer up our desires to God. A little child could have prayers that you might think as an adult, well, I've gone beyond that, I don't desire that anymore, right? Because God has been working on your desires, but that little child should offer up his or her desires unto God, right? Because God already knows what's in our hearts and he wants us to honestly say these things rather than to just offer up pretend sort of prayers that end up perhaps just really being hypocrisy. No, tell him the truth. What's your desire? Bring it up to God and then how do you do it? It's an offering up of our desires unto God in the name of Christ. Why is that? Why do we say in Jesus name? Which by the way, I recommend to you in your prayers. Gracious Heavenly Father, you know, you need to tell him your desires. And when you're ready to conclude, say in Jesus name. Why? Because we need a mediator between us and God. And that mediator is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only mediator between God and man. And we're told that Jesus in heaven intercedes for us, right? So we have this perfect mediator who has made peace with God for us. And now when we speak to God, we recognize his role as our mediator and we say, in Jesus' name, I'm offering up this prayer. And then it says, by the help of, the, of his spirit, his Holy Spirit, you see that not only is Jesus interceding for us, but even the Holy Spirit is at work in our prayer lives, sometimes with groans and sighs too deep for words, we're told. Uh, too deep for words. And we need this work of the Holy Spirit because we do not pray as we ought. And, and so we, we do this also with confession of sins. It says prayers and offering up of our desires unto God in the name of Christ by the help of his spirit with confession of our sins. Again, we don't want to be hypocrites. We want to acknowledge before God our weakness may be related to the very thing that, that we're asking him about. He said, Lord, I'm confessing my sin in some area, some idolatry that, that I have, some area uh, that I, I feel like I'm so quickly attacked by. And I said, look, is this troubling me as I come to God? Because we're told in the Psalms that if we treasure sin in our hearts, then he will not hear our prayers. So we want him to hear our prayers. So we confess our sins and of course, repenting, turning away from every sin. And what is sin? Well, sin 
is any lack of conforming to uh, the will of God or obedience to, you know, we're, we're, if we go against the obedience that God requires in his word, think Ten Commandments, obedience, think of the Sermon on the Mount, and think of the importance that we have in following Jesus, right? That when we go against these things, uh, then we transgress God's law. We don't conform to his commandments. That's, that's sin. So we need to confess that and turn away from all known sin, right? And then one more thing that we add, an offering up of our desires unto God in the name of Christ by the help of his spirit with confession of our sins and the last one and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Yeah, so important for us so that we're actually recognizing how kind and good God is to us day by day, even though we may struggle. We may be at a low point, yet can you find it in your heart to honestly thank him for his many, many mercies to you, to me, to others, right? So this is what prayer is. And of course, it, it involves, you know, the adoration of Almighty God and just knowing him to be who he is and wanting his name to be held in high regard and his, and his will to, to be done, his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. You recognize the Lord's prayer there for us, yeah. And yet also saying, that, yeah, I, I have needs today. I'm a creature in this world right now and, and I need my daily bread. I, I also need spiritual help. I need uh, tomorrow's sustenance for my soul to come today into this world. I, yeah, uh, I need forgiveness, of course, yeah. And I also need to many, many times to be pulled out of evil situations that certainly asking that God lead me, not in, in paths of evil, but in paths of righteousness for his own name's sake. All of this is, is from the word. So, you know, if we think of the scriptures that help us to understand this, remember in John 16, that Jesus says this in the 23rd verse, in that day you will ask nothing of me, truly, truly I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Of course, it's gotta be in the will of God. That's, that's part of asking in the name of Jesus, is that we're asking for things that we know to be agreeable to his will according to his word to us in the scriptures. So, yeah, this is, this is a great encouragement from Christ himself telling us that we can call Jesus' Father our Father and we can actually come to him boldly as our Abba Father and ask, uh, ask in prayer, in the name of Jesus. He'll give it to us. Then Romans 8, 26, I already mentioned, I'd like to mention it again, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and maybe that happens to you in your prayer life and say, say i i don't even know what to say but somehow within my soul i have these groanings these sighs too deep for words and yet and yet the lord knows the lord hears so we acknowledge our sin to God, it says in Psalm 32. I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. It doesn't have to be a big complicated thing. Some of the most wonderful times of confessing sin before the Lord for me in my life have just been as simple as me finally just recognizing an area. It may have been a long standing area of sin the recognizing it clearly and just saying, I'm sorry. Honestly, just uh, two words, I'm sorry. Oh, that may be all that, that is needed, you know? And then turn away from that sin and turn towards holy obedience towards Christ, you know? So let everyone who is godly offer prayer to, to God at a time when he may be found. This is still Psalm 35, verse six. You know, this is what we need to do. Today's the day. For us to acknowledge our sin. Then here's one, uh, 1 John 1, 9. It's an encouragement for us in terms of confessing our sins. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's wonderful. So we have their forgiveness and cleansing from Almighty God. And, uh, you know, there's some patterns in Scripture that are given to us, even sometimes lengthy prayers we have in Daniel 9, a marvelous prayer where he's doing these very things that we've talked about in this answer. You know, he's, he's offering up his desires to God, and the people are in exile, and he's, he's acknowledging sin. You know, he's, he's, a, he's doing this by the work of the Holy Spirit in his life, and He's, he's acknowledging the sin of the whole community. And then, yes, yeah, acknowledging God's justice and his mercies, you know, and God's great character, right? And then asking boldly and then acting on the thing that you have prayed about, you know. Step forward and move out in God's way. See, these are, these are really good things to do. Now, here's a couple of questions to think about. What changes have I observed in my prayers over the course of my life? We mentioned about a child's prayers, right? Precious, of course. But then you think of a person maybe on their deathbed and they're praying for something. And Well, there's been some movement over the course of a life for that. But it could be both very earnest prayers. But how has prayer changed for you as you've understood more about who God is, and about the scriptures and, you know, what the plan of God is. And so your prayers should be different, I would think, yes. And then here's another question. Do I know how to keep on praying during both good times and bad? Because this is, this is something we're to do all the time. Paul says, pray without ceasing. And uh, I think some of the most eminent people throughout the history of the Christian church who have really been following the Lord. They've said, look, he's not kidding about this. Just have an attitude, a posture, a prayer continually that like, here I am speaking to you, but my heart is also praying while I speak, praying that, that these words might be useful to you and that your prayer life might be aided, you know, by by these thoughts of, of prayer here. So, you know, this, these are some great passages, and I think we have some assurances that are given to us here. Look at this one from uh, Philippians 4, 6. Look, do not be anxious about anything. I think we've thought about this almost every time I've told you about systematic theology, because anxiety is such a big part of so many lives, and we, we want to be rid of it. Don't be anxious about anything. Here's Here's how it relates to prayers. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So prayer is a big part of the solution. And then moving ahead on the basis of faithful prayer. You know, I believe that I'm asking for something in accord with your will. I step out, Lord, trusting that you've heard You'll grant my requests because of Christ, my mediator, because I believe the Spirit is at work within me. So let me move out in accord with the prayer, right? Yes, and, and then here's, here's one from the Old Testament from Psalm 103. Imagine this. Here's a whole book of prayers, sung pr prayers, but you can speak them. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. What kind of benefits? What gracious mercies? He, he forgives all your iniquity and mine. He heals all your diseases. Sometimes now, sometimes in the life to come, you know, you're not going to be a diseased person. When there's a new, the new heavens and the new earth, you're, you know, you're going to be perfect in holiness and health. And, uh, and Jesus, you know, he carried our sorrows, our weaknesses. Yeah our sins, our diseases, he's carried these, uh, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, yes he does, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, that's marvelous. And James, uh, in the New Testament, he encourages us in chapter 5, 11, not only do we actually pray for one another, we become intercessors for one another, but 
but also we remain steadfast, he says in prayer. Look, stay steadfast in it. Uh, you've seen about the purpose of the Lord, for instance, in the life of Job, he says, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. So believe him, trust him in prayer. So these are some good things that help us. I, I wanted to bring up one other item uh, a little more carefully uh, or quickly right now, and that has to do with the source of our prayers. Like, what is the rule for our prayers? Where, how is it that we come to know what to pray? So, you know, am I doing the right thing in prayer? Um, what, what, what should I, what should I do here? Am I, am I actually praying for things as I ought to pray? So we have this question and answer given to us because we want our consciences to be uh, strengthened. You know, that as we pray, we're thinking, yes, I am praying something that's actually in the will of God. And here's the question as it was asked in the 17th century. Uh, what rule hath God given for our direction and the duty of prayer? Uh, and it, the answer is this. The whole word of God, you know, the whole Bible, is of use to direct us in the duty of prayer. I think that's true. From Genesis all the way through Revelation, there are prayers that can be made based on every chapter in the Scripture. Every verse is something we can pray, pray about. But, it says, the special rule of direction is that form of prayer which our Savior Christ taught his disciples, commonly called the Lord's Prayer. All right? So don't dismiss the Lord's Prayer as being just some perfunctory thing. That's only for little kids or um, that's a needless repetition. No, no, no. No, when Jesus was asked by his disciples, you know, teach us how to pray, this is a prayer he gave. Now, it can be used just as it is in the simple words that are given there. And throughout the centuries of the church, you know, people of, of all kinds of, you know, all kinds of Christians have prayed the Lord's Prayer. They prayed it separately, uh, alone, together as churches. It's a very, very good prayer. Right? So we have to acknowledge that. And then, we, and then we could take each part of it and think through it more carefully and slowly. And think, well, what does this all mean? It's given to us in Matthew's Gospel, given to us in Luke's Gospel, right? And uh, here's a question for you. Who first taught you the Lord's Prayer? Was it, was it your mom or your dad, your grandmother, grandfather? Was it a teacher? Maybe someone at school taught the Lord's Prayer to you, and now here you are, you're a teacher, you're teaching others. What a, what a tremendous privilege it is to teach this Lord's Prayer to others. And, and what was the ultimate source of it? Of course, no matter who it was who taught you that prayer, it was from the Bible that that prayer was given. How can I use, here's another question, how can I use the whole Bible for prayer, right? Well, that's a good one. See, every time we read the scriptures, if we're doing daily reading of the scriptures, which we, we, we really need that, we need it for our soul, then think about what you've read and, and just consider it for a moment. How would God have me pray based on these very words? Yeah. And perhaps you'll be able to think of some prayers, maybe even write some prayers, or, or think about maybe even just reciting certain passages to the Lord. It's your, it's your earnest prayer to Him. So think about, you know, in closing here, last minute we have, just think about this Lord's Prayer. You know, that, that these very words are useful. Our Father, not just my Father, but our Father, and not, not just some distant... God, but no, someone I'm allowed to call uh, my Abba Father, who art in heaven. Heaven is real, and our great God is ruling and reigning from heaven's heights. Hallowed be thy name. Everything that's meant by the name of God, all his attributes and all his ways, the ministry of the church that he's given to us, and the word, it's all holy. It's set apart, and may his name be holy because he is holy. And may his kingdom come. We're longing for it. We want the kingdom of evil and darkness to be utterly uh, 
sent away and we want the kingdom of light and of the truth of Christ to more and more have sway in our lives and lives of of peoples throughout the whole earth, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We, we, it's our own commitment. Say, Lord, I want to do things according to your ways, Lord God. And I long for that to be the case throughout the world. And see, all of that is beautiful, right? Uh, it's something we can long for. And then we we're, we say, look, give us this day our daily bread. I need it. It, it, it literally says, uh, give us the coming bread. I think of the bread of the new era of the, of the new heavens and earth. So feed my body, feed my soul. Yes. And, um, and then don't only give me that, that bread, give us this day our daily bread, but forgive me my debts, my trespasses, my sins. Forgive us our, our debts. As we forgive our debtors, I have to have that commitment to be a person of forgiveness utterly committed to that right and lead us not into temptations we recognize this is a world where there's temptation everywhere and god is not trying to destroy us but now he's testing us sometimes but show us the way out right first corinthians 10 show us the way out of temptation so that we can turn away from that way out and turn toward you right uh, and deliver us from evil because sometimes we find ourselves stuck could be some measure of addiction of some kind or just some familiar sin that we've embraced in our lives and now it's causing quite a trouble and we can't seem to get out of it right go for help by the way for that that don't don't have to you don't have to suffer in silence alone there are p people that focus on particular sin areas and they they're Hopefully, they're going to be people of grace to help you understand and help you to get out of an area of sin. It's better to do it now than 10 years from now or more. Yeah, do it now, right? Lord, we come to you now at the end of this time of thinking about prayer, and we're delighted to know that we can approach you in such a, in such a wonderful way that you have tender regard for your children, and you will not cast us aside, but you welcome us as our wonderful and gracious and holy and just Father. We trust you and we thank you for the sacrifice of Christ that gives us confidence. We know our sins have been atoned for and we can move ahead now in the pathway of righteousness that you are laying out for us as we would follow Jesus. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.